Portland City Commissioners Renee Gonzalez and Dan Ryan laid out their objections to the voter pass charter reform. Now both commissioners are backing off proposals that they wanted to bring to the voters before the November 2024 election. Gonzalez and Ryan wanted to add three amendments to the charter that voters already approved. They would have reduced the number of city commissioners from 12 to 8, simplified ranked choice voting, and given the mayor veto power. At the time of this taping, Gonzalez and Ryan still want to put the mayor veto power on the May 2024 ballot. In a statement Thursday, Gonzalez says he's walking back on the other two issues because there wasn't enough support from the other city council members. The latest developments broke just after we taped this week's interview with Portland City Commissioner Mingus Maps, and here's my conversation with Commissioner Maps. Portland City Commissioner Mingus Maps wants to be the next mayor of Portland. He's the first declared candidate for the office as current mayor Ted Wheeler hasn't revealed his plans as of yet. Maps, a former political science professor, has degrees from Reed College and Cornell University and worked in the Lake County Commissioner Gladys McCoy's office to start his career in politics. He was elected to Portland City Council in the year 2000. Mingus Maps, welcome to Ion Northwest Politics. Oh, thanks for having me here today. Well, the filing window for this position doesn't even open up until June of next year. So why did you declare so early? Well, I tell you, um, I think this is a critical moment in our city's history. Um, I plan to spend this campaign really listening to people I wanted to get out and spend the next year, uh, you know, knocking on doors, holding community meetings, really hearing about uh, um, citizens' concerns. You know, um, I think the stakes on the table are so high at this moment that this is a, an important opportunity to have a conversation about how we can make you know, an even better Portland. Well, uh, one of the big issues, of course, many would say the big issue is the homeless problem yeah, that we absolutely. have on our streets. Uh, how satisfied are you with the progress on Safe Rest Villages or Mayor Wheeler's plans for those mega homeless camps? Well, I, I think we actually have enjoyed considerable success around Safe Rest Villages. We stood up a handful and uh, later on this month we'll be opening up one of our larger, I think of them as Safe Rest campuses. I think that model has largely proved itself to be successful. Uh, we've been able to get people off the sidewalks into uh, tiny homes and we're also finding that over time uh, folks are transitioning from those homes into jobs and more stable housing. Um, it's not perfect. We definitely have to do a better job to make sure that uh, um, the neighbors who are around those villages are safe and that we don't have problems with litter and whatnot. But it's part of the solution. I would say these uh, uh, tiny rest villages or whatnot are not the um, the whole answer, you know, I think there are much deeper problems that we still need to solve, and that's one of the reasons why I'm running for mayor. One of the other <laughs> issues with the Safe Rest Villages are just the numbers, the numbers of people that we can get into those situations when there are so many more who are out on the Absolutely. streets. So how do we get to the bigger problem? Well, I think you're exactly right. Uh, Safe Rest Villages provide housing for maybe a couple of hundred folks. You know, the sad reality is we literally have several thousand people on the streets. Uh, we would have to have hundreds of safe first villages around the city. <clears throat> I don't think that we have the capacity to do that. I do think that there are, are other alternatives, though. <clears throat> we should invest more in shelters to keep people, <clears throat> for to provide them with temporary places to uh, sleep at night. I think that we need to do re rent assistance. I think we need to look at uh, supportive housing. Really, what we're trying to do here is to build a continuum of services for folks on the streets, which actually meets them where they are. You know, some folks uh, are houseless today because they lost a job, but are ready to go to work and they just need that little bit of a hand up. Other folks are on the streets today because they have mental health issues or drug addiction issues and really have a lot of work to do before they can even, you know, uh, uh, um, go inside. Yeah. Uh Let's talk about the change in city government, oh, yeah. Portland city government. That's the big issue right now. Yep. Uh, recently, two of your fellow commissioners, uh, Dan Ryan and Renee Gonzalez, they proposed changes yep. to what the charter review said that we're going to do yep. as of next year, uh, which would add seven commissioners to the current five uh, for a total of 12. It would add yep. a city manager yep. to control bureaus. Uh, but we're hearing lately that Commissioner Ryan is backing off some of the elements of that proposal to change the charter. So what, what do you think of the charter review change to begin with, and, and what do you think of what your two fellow commissioners are sure. trying to do? Uh, first, you know, I, I think we have good news for Portlanders. Uh, our charter, which we've had for more than 100 years, is obsolete, and it's time to uh, update it. Uh, we recently had an election where uh, Portlanders embraced a set of really 
broad reforms, which include everything from increasing the number of people on council to appointing a city manager, that's good. There are also some um, untested practices, let's say, that are uh, coming in the next charter. Uh, things like multi-member districts with ranked choice voting. The mayor itself won't actually serve on council, um, and it's not really clear how the council and the mayor talk to each other. So there's some structural issues that I think uh, we're all concerned about. Um, I give credit to Commissioner Ryan and Commissioner Gonzalez for um, highlighting that and coming up with uh, a, a a package of proposed fixes. Um, however, at least for me, um, while I think they are raising important issues, I also think that we had an election on this matter. Uh, the voters made the decisions that they did. Um, and right now I'm really focused in on implementing charter reforms so that on January 1, 2025, uh, Portlanders wake up to a brand new, better functioning government. What about the transition? I mean, you're still running the government under yeah. the current system until we get to that new system. So how difficult is that? It's enormously difficult. I will tell you, I would estimate that inside uh, City Hall right now, we're probably spending 20% of our time uh, preparing for this transition. Um, it's a huge move. You have to rethink everything from how you deliver services to like how you um, organize your buildings and whatnot. You know, you, cur you cannot fit 12 city councilors in our current city call chambers, just to pick a relatively trivial example. But to address that would cost millions of dollars, or at least there's a proposal in there to renovate City Hall uh, uh, so we can fit 12 uh, councilors there. Right? I'll, I'll say I'm not totally sold on that idea. Um, it's a great opportunity. Um, there are a lot of challenges. I will tell you, um, I think we're going to be prepared and up and running and open for business on January 1st, 2025. At the same time, I also want to warn Portlanders. Um, I think a lot of folks think that charter reform is a one and done kind of deal. Um, you know, we're implementing the most significant change we've made to local government in more than 100 years. Um, there are going to be bumps in the road. We're going to have to make adjustments as we go. We're going to learn things. We're also going to grow and evolve in different directions, and we will have a very different uh, set of political leaders making these decisions. So uh, charter reform isn't a moment. I would say it's a process which will kind of dominate our work, um, especially in local government for the next several years. A lot of people in the public uh, perceive a disconnect between the city of Multnomah County yep. when it comes to uh, issues involving uh, the homelessness, how to deal with our drug addiction on the streets. Uh, for example, the, the recent plan uh, that was proposed by the health department to hand out straws and, and tinfoil to fentanyl addicts, yeah. uh, the mayor immediately came out and said, no, we're not doing that. Yep. What is the disconnect between the city and Multnomah County when you're dealing with the same issues? Um, that is a great question. I think it is true that uh, the county and the city often have fundamentally different philosophies around how to approach common problems. I think that is one of the reasons why the next mayor is going to be so important. You know, I, I would argue that one of the reasons we have performed so poorly um, in advancing issues like getting people off the street is that the city and the county have done a terrible job at coordinating our houseless services. Um, that is going to be my uh, top priority when I come in as mayor. You know, you know, it's far past time that the city and the county come to an agreement on what's a city responsibility in the homeless space, what's a county responsibility in the homeless space, and what is a shared responsibility. And remarkably, after many, many years and t hundreds of millions of dollars at this point being spent, we still don't even have that level of clarity. And frankly, fixing that comes down to leadership. We've got uh, about a minute left, but what do you think about the Joint Office of Homeless Services? It's called the Joint Office, but it's run by Multnomah County. And, uh, you know, the, the city and the, the Joint Office have had some differences. Well, um, absolutely. This is, uh, that is the, the very embodiment of the leadership problem that I was pointing to before. You know, it's interesting. The city calls it the Joint Office. I believe at this point the uh, county calls it the Joint uh, Department. As, uh, we don't even view these offices as being the same. We call them something different. Um, um, that office needs to work better. I will tell you, um, while I serve on this council and when I'm mayor, my top priority is going to bring clarity to what that office does. You know, the city of Portland invests tens of millions of dollars in that office every year. We have basically no influence over how those dollars get spent. Um, that needs to change. And uh, frankly, that is one of the most important reasons why I'm running for mayor.
And uh, we're not talking about small amounts of money here, more than $40 million oh, that my the gosh, city has yes. contributed to the joint office. Uh, um, absolutely. And I will tell you, you know, the city has, and none of those dollars are coordinated. You know, I'm your infrastructure guy, your roads guy. It's my responsibility to keep uh, sidewalks clear and whatnot. Uh, so if there's, but if there's a tent, despite the fact that we give, you know, more than $30 million a year to the county, um, I can't call the county up and say, hey, I have a, a bunch of tents on the sidewalk. Could you send down some uh, uh, um, outreach workers to help place them? That is just insane. It's not rocket science to fix, but we have to fix it. And frankly, under the leadership we've seen for the past several years, that problem has not been resolved. Portland City Commissioner Mingus Maps, thanks for being on Iowa Northwest Politics. Oh, thank you. It's been a real pleasure.